Good afternoon. My name is Marjorie Linton, and I am an ordained minister of religion, author, motivational speaker, and a spiritual advisor with over 20 years experience. Welcome to my podcast, Healing Thoughts Today. Please join me now as I share workable views for healing and inspiration to empower you and to lift your vision higher. Taking a look at attitudes is the healing thought for today. And beloved friends, we all have attitudes, some good and some bad. What is important to realize is that our attitudes dictate the quality of our lives. So let us pay attention to our attitudes as our mental attitudes can make us or break us. They set the tone of success. They tell the world what you expect from life. And you will receive just what you expect. Beware of your attitudes, my friends. If you have a bad attitude, it will reflect in your world. It will be just like a boomerang. When you know who you are, however, there will be no need for attitudes. Amen? Actually, you will become more aware of your attitudes and you will cultivate a good relationship with yourself and with others. This will eventually lead to a positive state of mind that helps you to advance spiritually, enhancing the quality of your life. The more confident you are about yourself, the better your attitude will be towards others and the more good you will receive from others. A good mental attitude, my friends, begins on the inside. It all begins with a thought. Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The nicer you are to people, my friends, the nicer people will be to you. For instance, if you want love in your life, think about giving love to others. You will receive kindness and love when you begin to give it out yourself. This is a biblical principle. Matthew 7 verse 12 reminds us, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you. Do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. We can make a difference in our lives and be a light unto the world with practice. We were made in the light of God. And when we live our lives from the consciousness of light, our blessings will flow. Romans 14 verse 17 says, The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, beloved friends, we can develop good mental attitudes with practice. There are a variety of ways that we can improve our attitudes so that our lives will be blessed. In his Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus gave us some guiding principles. He began his sermon by reminding us who we are. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hid, he said in verse 14. In other words, 
as children of God, we need to have right attitudes no matter what our circumstances are. And we need to be the light of the world by letting our lights shine or by living by example. Our light sometimes may get dim and our ego may try to take control when we encounter people who annoy and test our faith. When we experience sadness, loss, times of adversity, and when we neglect our prayer times. But we are made to overcome our human weaknesses, my friends. The darkness will disappear when we turn our faces toward the light of God within us, which cannot be extinguished. The light is always there within us. We only need to open up ourselves to the truth and practice the truth. As children of God, we have the potential to be perfect. Yes, we have the potential to be light bearers by adopting eight attitudes of mind, which Jesus outlined in his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. The first attitude is to embody a sense of inadequacy. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said. This does not mean that we are any less than we are. It simply means to have a sense of humility. Of ourselves, we can do nothing. But with Christ, we can do anything. The next attitude is to have a sense of contrition. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Please note, my friends, it is not the mourning of itself which is blessed, but the comfort we receive from the Lord when we mourn. Having a sense of modesty is the next attitude Jesus saw as important. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And here again, my friends, meekness does not mean shrinking at all, but it is showing total dependency on God. Amen? The next attitude is to have a relationship with God. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be filled. Amen. The next attitude is to have a sense of compassion. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, says Jesus. And here, my friends, we have an outworking of the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And you will be blessed. Having a clean heart is another attitude of great importance. Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Amen. It is not always easy to be a peacemaker where there is conflict. But in the next attitude, Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Amen. The last attitude, but certainly not the least, is to be of courageous loyalty. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. When men shall revile you, and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Amen. Beloved friends, these eight attitudes do not cost a thing. 
but they enhance our lives making us blessed we all want to be blessed so it suits us to practice them we may not all accomplish them all at once but little by little with constant practice our consciousness will improve and we will get better and better and better at them when we adopt these attitudes of mind my friends we will embody the kingdom of heaven consciousness a story is told of a woman in a far country who prayed that she might be able to take her family from the valley where her home stood to the high mountains of God. As she prayed, an angel appeared and said, Before God is ready to take you and your family, you must set your house in order. There may be others who might want to stop there after you are gone. So the woman put her house in order. She became cleanly, kind and forgiving. Then she said to the angel, may I go now that my house is in order? No, said the angel. Your garden is full of weeds. Someone may want to watch a while in the garden while you're gone. So the woman weeded her garden and tended it for many years. She uprooted bad habits in herself and pruned poisonous growths of hates and grudges. Then she said, Can I now lead my family to the mountains of God? The angel shook his head. There is a beggar outside your door. Until you have fed him, you cannot say all is done. So the woman fed the beggar and served all her friends and neighbors and all rejoiced because of her help. Then she thought she was ready. But the angel asked her to do one thing more. There is someone coming on the road who is also seeking God, but they do not have your faith and courage. Give them courage and faith, and then ask to see the mountains of God. So the woman helped the weak and the discouraged wherever she found them. And now she asks the angel, May I take my family in? The son who was healed of drink through her love. The husband bound to her by silken cords of love and service. The daughter saved by a mother's prayers. Even the grateful neighbors came in and the angel opened the window of the little house. And lo, it was on the mountaintop of God. Amen. And now, beloved friends, let us look at some points for contemplation. A good attitude sets the tone of success. Attitudes tell the world what you expect from life and you will receive just what you expect. When you know who you are, there will be no need for bad attitudes. Good attitudes lead to a positive state of mind. The more confident you are about yourself, the better your attitude will be towards others. A good mental attitude begins on the inside. You will receive kindness and love when you begin to give it out. We were made in the light of God, and when we live from the consciousness of light, our blessings will flow. 
Jesus gave us guiding principles to live by in his Sermon on the Mount, which makes us blessed. To be the light of the world, we need to live our lives by example. As light bearers, we need to adopt eight attitudes which Jesus outlined in his Sermon on the Mount. One, to have a sense of inadequacy. Two, a sense of contrition. Three, a sense of modesty. Four, to have a relationship with God. Five, a sense of compassion. Six, to have a clean heart. Seven, to be a peacemaker. And eight, to be of courageous loyalty. Amen. And now, please join me for the call to action. And I invite you to pause right now and ask yourself, what kind of person am I? What am I really like? Remember, dear friends, no one is perfect. We are all individuals on a journey of self-discovery. We all make mistakes and we all fall short in our humanity. But there is always an opportunity for us to reform. Ultimately, we need to take responsibility and practice the truth that we know. Move beyond your human limitation, my friends, by paying attention to the way you live your life. Say thank you more often. Speak your truth quietly and softly. Always take responsibility for your actions. Own your mistakes and your shortcomings. Always act with a purpose. A good one. Forgive the limitations of others. Be mindful of other people's feelings. Take criticisms with a smile. Remember, dear friends, we are all mirrors for each other. Do not expect everyone to be perfect or reliable. Don't take things personally. Don't be too surprised at yourself for anything. Always remember the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And continue to hold yourself to your own high standards. Amen. It was with the joy of the Lord that I shared healing thoughts today with you, my friends. I hope you have been blessed. Please join me again next week, Friday, for another healing thought for today. God bless you. Please subscribe. Mm -hmm.